It's been almost a year since I bought my 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour, and I rode the bike back from Shawnee Honda, and just about three days after that, I put out my first video, my first impressions video of the 2018 Honda Goldwing. Well, now that I've owned the bike for a year and put 8,000 miles on it, what do I think about the 2018 Honda Goldwing? You know, when I bought this bike, I said I was going to give it a year. I was going to ride it for a year and then I was going to decide, do I want to keep this bike or do I want to go back to the 2017 model? I'm going to let you know at the end of this video what my final verdict is on this 2018 Honda Goldwing. I'm going to go into a lot of detail on what I love about this bike, what I like about the bike, and what I don't like about the bike. And then I'll tell you if I think it's a better or worse bike than the previous generation Goldwing. First of all, the bike is smaller and lighter than the previous Goldwing, and to me, that's a big plus. I like it because it's more manageable, it's easier to handle. Uh, I just felt like the previous version Goldwing was a little bulky, a little heavy, and this bike fits me perfectly. Now it's still a big motorcycle, but it's much more manageable than the previous Goldwing. One of the first things people started criticizing right after this motorcycle came out was the suspension system. There's a lot of videos out on YouTube talking about how the suspension is junk, it bottoms out, it's uh, not capable of a motorcycle this size, and I guess I just have to disagree. I think the suspension on this bike is much better than it was in my 2012 Goldwing. I mean, there's not even a comparison. Now, I know some people talk about the issue of it bottoming out and, not, and it's being undersprung. I've only had this motorcycle bottom out one time, and that's when I hit a pretty sizable pothole. And it was also before I started setting the adjustment on the suspension to the Rider Plus luggage setting, which is the second stiffness setting. So since I've adjusted that setting, I haven't had any problems at all. And like I said, I've only had it bottom out on me one time, and we have pretty bad streets here in Dallas, Texas. One of the things I wanted for a long time on a Goldwing was an electric windshield. And i got to say, I think Honda did an excellent job with this electric windscreen. It works flawlessly. It really does make a difference. In hot temperature, you can lower it. And in colder temperatures, you can raise it up. Or in windy conditions, you can raise it up. And it just really works well. Now, overall, the wind protection on this motorcycle is not as good as it was on the previous Goldwing. You know, it's just not as big a bike. It doesn't have as much body work to protect your legs or your shoulders. And even though Honda did try with the little upper deflectors, which is an accessory item, and they're really nice looking, they're well integrated, they're very well made, but they really don't block that much wind off your hands. There's a little tunnel next to the rear view mirror that just kind of forces wind and cold air right over the top of your hands. And those little deflectors, like I say, they're well made and they work really well in the summer to direct air to you to get you cooled off, but they don't do that much to protect your hands. They're not as good as, say, the Baker Air Wings were on the previous generation Goldwing. Now, one of the things that's really helped on this bike is I added the F4 Customs Plus 4 windshield, which is 4 inches taller than the stock windshield and about 2 inches wider. And at 6'2 and 180 pounds, that really does make a huge difference in keeping some of the wind off my shoulders and off my head. So that's been a great addition. They also make a 20-inch recurve model. Uh, you might want to look at my video where I review the F4 Customs windshields. I've been very pleased uh, with that as an additional uh, item for this Goldwing, this 2018 Plus Goldwing. One area where Honda really seems to always get it right is on the engines. And this engine is powerful, 
It's smooth. It's got great uh, fuel delivery and power delivery. Now, I wouldn't say it's as smooth as the previous uh, GL1800 engine because when I'm at a stop at idle, I will get a little vibration through the hand grips and you won't get that little nickel to stand up uh, on its end on this engine like you did on the previous engine. That engine was just rock solid smooth. But when it comes to smooth power delivery, I think this engine has it beat, has the previous version beat. Uh, they've really done a great job with the ECM, with the programming and the fuel mapping. You don't have that low speed stumble uh, that you had on the 2012 and up models. Uh, that was a real irritating thing for a lot of people. This bike, power delivery is perfect. Couldn't be better. Now I have the DCT model and I wasn't sure when I first got the bike how I was going to like the DCT, but I'm pretty I was intrigued by it. And the more I've lived with it, the more I like it. Uh, it. You know, you have the option of having shift automatically, or you can go into manual mode, which is actually very cool. But I ride most of the time in the econ mode, uh, just when I'm going around town. Uh, tour mode is the default setting. Uh, the sport mode is a little too... Uh, rowdy for me. Um, man, it is like a sport bike when you put it in sport mode. And the rain mode is okay when the roads are wet. I actually think econ mode works fine in the rain as well. So I give the DCT transmission a big thumbs up. And like I said earlier, in manual mode, it's just crazy. When you're riding in the twisties, when I went to the uh, tail of the dragon last year, um, man, that's the way to do it. Just use the little paddle shifters on the left hand, hand controls and this thing shifts so quick and so smooth and so sure. I mean, it's just amazing. So DCT transmission gets a big thumbs up from me. Another thing that I absolutely love about this Goldwing and it gets a huge thumbs up and that's on fuel economy. You know, this bike gets about a 17% better fuel mileage than I was getting on my 2012 Goldwing. On my 2012, I was averaging about 35 miles to the gallon. That's in town and highway riding combined. On this bike, after a year, I'm averaging over 41 miles to the gallon. That's about a 17% increase, and that's pretty impressive when you think about it. And interestingly, the biggest gain comes in round town driving, not on the highway. I don't actually notice a huge difference between this bike on the highway as far as mileage and my 2012 Goldwing. But commuting around town, it really does get good mileage. Now, I still have a lot more to cover on the 2018 Goldwing. I haven't even gotten to the part about the seat and the trunk and the saddlebags, but I'm getting to it. And I just want to take a second and remind you that if you like this video, if you want to see more videos like it, please take a second to click that little subscribe button down below. And if you click on the little bell icon, YouTube will remind you when I put out a new video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Instagram. Share it on uh, Twitter. Just share it everywhere. Now let's talk a little bit about the audio and the navigation system. Uh, first thing about the audio system, I'm going to say it's kind of a wash. There's good and there's bad. Uh, on the good side, the XM radio works very well, very clear reception. The Bluetooth connectivity with the headsets has been flawless on mine. It's a little tricky getting the headset programmed with the bike, getting it paired. But once you get it paired, it seems to be very solid. Uh, now, Honda's come out with a couple of updates to the navigation and audio system. The first update didn't do much good for me. In fact, it actually was worse. Uh, but this new 2019 audio navigation update actually resolved some issues with iPhone. It resolved issues uh, in the navigation system. And I believe with CB radios, which I do not have. But um, I know that after the first update, I noticed my volume levels had dropped quite a bit. I, I had to go up to 17 or 18 on the little scale to even be able to hear through the headset. Now I'm back to where I can hear everything at 12 or 13. So they've obviously addressed that issue. Uh, the navigation system, my first impression uh, a year ago was that it was junk. Uh, it's still junk. 
it's no good for touring. It's uh, not up to the other quality of this bike. And I, I know that some of you don't care about navigation. You think that a GPS is a waste of money anyway. Uh, but for those of us who do like a GPS and we like to program our routes and do long distance tours over multiple days, uh, this system just, just doesn't have what it takes. Uh, it's, I don't know what else to say. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to dwell on it. Uh, I actually installed a Garmin 595 LM on the left handlebar uh, just because I needed a good GPS that I could rely on. And so um, you shouldn't have to do that on a $30,000 motorcycle that has a navigation system. But I did, and I'm happy with the Garmin system. The AM and FM reception are really bad on this bike, uh, much worse than the previous model. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if it's an antenna issue. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, they, you just do not get good, clear reception on AM, FM. And I also get some interference, like... When I'm listening to AM or FM and I turn on the turn signal, I can hear a little beeping or clicking in the background. So there's some sort of interference happening that probably needs to be addressed either in the aftermarket or by Honda. Of course, I don't have an iPhone and this bike comes with uh, Apple CarPlay, which is really for the iPhone. Uh, I have an Android and there's very little support for the Android on this motorcycle and that's a shame. I wish it had Android Auto or at least better integration where you could dial numbers while you're riding uh, from your Android phone. And it's just not a very elegant solution. So I wish Honda would pay more attention to that. And that's one of the things I don't like about the bike is that it doesn't work well or integrate well with an Android phone. Now, a lot of people have complained about the rear view mirrors because they, they are smaller than the previous Goldwing. And I guess I've just adapted. I'm used to them. Uh, they're big enough. They're bigger than most motorcycles. They are rock solid. They do not vibrate at all, no matter what gear you're in or how fast you're going. The, the mirrors are just super solid, very clear images. So I actually like the rear view mirrors. I don't think it's a negative at all. Now, when it comes to the paint and the fit and the finish of this motorcycle, uh, when I first took delivery of the motorcycle up in Oklahoma, uh, before I after, ever left the dealership, I noticed some marring on the paint, mostly on the saddlebag covers and a little bit on the rear fender area. Um, I pointed it out to the sales manager. He filed a claim with Honda, and Honda actually did uh, replace one of my saddlebag covers under warranty. Uh, a lot of people uh, noticed they were having the same issue with the 2018 Goldwings. I'm not sure if it's been addressed in the 2019s yet. But um, if you're buying a, a new Goldwing, make sure you go over it with a fine-tooth comb before you take delivery because if there is a warranty claim on paint, it has to be done within the first 30 days of ownership, just so you know. Um, I was able to buff out one of the... Uh, there was like something had been rubbing against the paint during delivery, during shipping, and it kind of like rubbed a spot on the paint and made it like a marred finish in the clear coat. My brother and I were able to buff out one of them uh, pretty successfully, uh, very successfully, and the other part simply couldn't be buffed out and had to be replaced, but Honda did replace it under warranty. Now, I have the pearl white. I absolutely love this color. I think the quality and the, the vis visual appeal of the paint is as good as I've seen on any motorcycle. It's absolutely beautiful. Yes, there is a little bit of orange peel, but it really, in the sunlight, this bike just sparkles. And actually, every paint I've seen, every color I've seen on the 2018-2019s have been the same way. They're really just beautiful paint finishes. Now, the fit uh, leaves a little bit to be desired in some areas, and I know I'm nitpicking right now. I know I'm, I'm, I realize that, but for example, the right-hand pocket door on my motorcycle, and I've seen this on others as well, when you close it, it's not level, it's not flush. It kind of sticks up on one end, and it just doesn't look right. Um, the fuel uh, lid on the uh, top shelter doesn't, is not flush with the rest of the top shelter. Um, there's a place on the trunk where there's a, a, a little cowling underneath that doesn't, it, it kind of, there's an edge there, it just doesn't look right. So there are some fit and finish issues uh, with the 2018-2019 Goldwing, 
but I am probably being a little bit too nitpicky on that. Now this motorcycle has LED lighting all the way around. So it's got LED headlights, brake, uh, brake lights, tail lights, and overall they're pretty good. Uh, I would say I'd give it a thumbs up in general. Uh, they're from a, a visibility down the road perspective. They're not quite as good as my old 2007 Goldwing. Uh, 2012 was not quite as good as the 2007 because they blacked out the surround around the headlights, and that kind of uh, cut down on the refractive lighting. But uh, these lights are good. I'm not a big fan of LED lights uh, for headlights because I just don't think they throw the light the same as halogen lights or HID lights. But these are pretty good for LEDs. They're okay. Uh, and uh, from a visibility standpoint to oncoming traffic, uh, during the daytime, you can hardly see this bike coming if you have the low beams on. If you have the high beams on, the bike is visible to oncoming traffic. Uh, so it's a good idea to probably install the LED fog lights because that does make you more visible to oncoming traffic. And I have installed LED fog lights and I'm very happy with them. Now I'm not finished. I'm still got to talk about the engine drone, the trunk, the saddlebags, the seat. Lots of stuff coming up. But I want to take a second to let you know that this video is being sponsored by my 2018 plus Honda Goldwing maintenance videos which are available on Vimeo.com. These videos are available on demand in streaming full HD or you can download them to your computer or your device for viewing offline. Now there's 39 videos in the set currently. We're adding new videos all the time but I'm going to show you how I work on my 2018 Goldwing so that you can do things like change your own oil, change your brake pads, your brake fluid, your coolant, all the stuff that you would normally pay a dealer hundreds or thousands of dollars to do. So check out my 2018 plus Honda Goldwing maintenance videos. I'll put the link in the description down below and I'll put the web address. Uh, just go to my website cruisemansgarage.com for more information. Now I remember when I first got the bike and rode it back, I noticed this drone coming from the engine. At about 65 to 75 miles an hour, it's really noticeable. And I think when you're a new owner of this bike, you notice it. Uh, I'm used to it now, I don't even notice it. So it's another one of those things I've kind of adapted to. Uh, it's not so bad that it, it interferes with the audio system or talking on the phone or anything like that. So I don't think the engine drone's a big issue. It's something that Honda, maybe they're going to address it by retuning the uh, mufflers or the exhaust system. But I think it's something you get used to. And the engine actually has a pretty nice little growl to it when you get on the bike. So um, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not saying that the engine drone's a big negative one way or the other. Now in my first impressions video, I talked about the seat and at that time I'd only had the bike three days and I said that the jury was still out on how comfortable this seat is on the 2018 Plus Goldwing. Well, the good news is the jury is back. The bad news is the verdict is guilty. The seat is horrible. This is one of the most uncomfortable seats I've ever sat on on a touring bike. Big thumbs down to Honda on the seat. There's just simply not enough padding. Um, I could maybe go an hour on this seat before I had to get off the bike, stretch my legs, bend over, do some things just to get some blood flowing. It was that uncomfortable. Now, I drove my bike down to uh, Bryan College Station and had John at Bike Solutions do the wing soft upgrade to this seat, and it's one of the best things I've had done to the bike so far. I can now easily go two hours or more without having to get off the bike. I usually only ride two hours at a time anyway, so it's no big deal. But uh, I highly recommend that you check out that wing soft upgrade uh, to your uh, motorcycle seat if you get a 2018-2019 Goldwing. It's very cost effective and it makes a huge difference in the comfort of the motorcycle. Now I also added a Utopia backrest. Uh, I was not a big fan of the Honda OEM backrest because I thought it looked kind of cheap and thin and not very comfortable. Uh, but the Utopia is thick, it's plush, very similar, if not identical, to what they had on the previous Goldwing. And, uh, I mean, it's easy to install. I've been very happy with the Utopia backrest. Okay, let's talk about the trunk space, because this is another thumbs down. This is something where Honda really kind of messed up. 
if they had just added a half an inch to the depth, the height, the length of the trunk, they'd have solved the problem. You know, it, the first time I tried to get two helmets in this motorcycle, there's no way two helmets were going in this bike. But that's because I was trying to put them in the trunk the way I did on my previous Goldwing, and they simply won't go. Uh, I did finally learn that if you turn one on the side or turn them on their side, there is a way to fit two helmets in this motorcycle. Now, I have a, a medium, I think it's a medium or a large, I'm not sure, a full face helmet. It's actually a large. And my girlfriend has a, a three quarter inch, I think hers is a medium. And I can get both of those in the trunk. It's not easy, but I can do it. So, trunk space, an issue. Saddlebags, not so much. I've kind of adapted to the size of the saddlebags, and um, I'm a solo rider 99% of the time, so I can carry everything I need on this motorcycle for a four-day trip, no problem. Uh, if I need to be gone a little longer, I could put a bag on the back seat, or if I'm going to be gone for two weeks or more, I'll just pull my trailer. So I added a Rivco trailer hitch, which I'm very happy with. I pulled my Bushtech trailer. I got all the room in the world in there. I've adapted to the smaller trunk and the smaller saddlebags. It's the price you have to pay to have the smaller, more nimble, more manageable size of the motorcycle. And I really don't think it's as big a negative as I thought it was uh, the week after I had the bike. So I've adapted. I, like, I, I wish the trunk were bigger, but I can live with it the way it is. And let's face it, most people that ride a motorcycle don't have a trunk at all. Now, if you don't want to put your helmets in the trunk, there's really no good way to store a helmet on the bike. The helmet lock that comes with the motorcycle is pure junk. Big thumbs down. Afterthought. I don't know who at Honda came up with this idea for this stupid little helmet lock that goes in the side uh, grab handle, grab rail. Uh, lid locks makes a much better solution. goes on the end of the handlebar. Uh, and if you're going to keep your helmet on the motorcycle itself, not in the trunk, that's the way to go, something like lid locks. Now the center pocket is an interesting idea. It, I like to have that storage space there, but I, I'm going to have to give it a thumbs down because of the design. Uh, the latch mechanism is poorly designed. Uh, they need to redo it. It needs to have a lock because this is the location where the USB cable is for your telephone. So if you want to charge your cell phone, you keep it in that center pocket. Somebody in the aftermarket or Honda themselves need to come up with a locking mechanism for that center pocket door. Now, as you know, I do maintenance videos for the Goldwing. And how is this bike to work on? Well, it's a mixed bag. Some things are much easier than they were on the previous Goldwing, believe it or not. Some things, much more difficult. Uh, things like changing your oil now on a DCT transmission, you got three drain bolts instead of one. You have two filters to be concerned about instead of one. I have a friend that paid $235 at the Honda dealer just to get an oil changed on a DCT. That's outrageous. Over $100 in labor for an oil change. So... This is a bike you're probably going to want to figure out how to work on yourself because labor is going to be very expensive. Now, things like getting to the air filter. If you think getting to the air filter on the 2001 to 2017 Goldwing was a pain, wait till you do it on this bike. You just won't believe the body parts that have to come off and what you have to do to get to the air filter. Honda basically, the engineers, took an air filter and they said, let's figure out how to build a motorcycle around this. And that's what they did. So they just started stacking layer on layer on layer on top of this air filter. And that's basically, you got to take all that off to get to it. It's doable, uh, but it's a pain. Now, when it comes time to working on things like the brakes, it's much easier than it was on the previous Goldwing. Uh, brake fluids are easier. Uh, a lot of things are actually easier to work on on this bike. Removing or replacing a windshield is a piece of cake. It's four bolts and the windshield's off. You put the four bolts back on, you're ready to go. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but it's definitely a motorcycle that you're going to want some help with videos, uh, training, or the Honda service manual, things like that. You don't want to just strike out on your own and start working on this thing unless you really know what you're doing. So what is the final verdict? Um, after a year and 8,000 miles, uh, if I had the opportunity, would I, and I get this question all the time, would I go back to my 2012 if I could hit the rewind and go back and never buy this 2018 Goldwing, would I be happier with the previous generation Goldwing or this Goldwing? 
and it's not even a question. Uh, this is a better motorcycle overall than all than my 2012 Goldwing. I like it better. I like the looks of it better. I like the Bluetooth communications. I like the electronics. I love the dash. I love all of the electronic computers. The hand controls and the console controls are as nice as I've seen on any motorcycle anywhere in the world. I love the paint finish. Uh, I, I like the way it handles. I love the power delivery. I think overall this is a better bike for me, and that's important for me, not for everyone, but for me, I prefer the 2018-2019 Goldwing, the sixth generation Goldwing, to the fifth generation Goldwing. It just fits me. It's like the Goldilocks thing. You know, one bike's too big, one bike's too small, one bike's just right. This bike is just right for me. So that's my verdict. After one year and 8,000 miles, I am in love with the 2018 Goldwing Tour.